Okay, good morning. In the previous lecture, we have started with the switch B. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So in the last lecture, we have started with the switch B. We do different materials are connected together to enhance the bending capacity that B is known as a switch B. I told that if suppose this is the wooden material and this is the another suppose steel material. When these two materials are rigidly connected here yeah, to enhance the bending capacity, it is known as a flitch beam. Now in flitch beam, the total moment of resistance of this flitch beam of this composite section is the moment of resistance of the material number one plus moment of resistance of the material number two, or moment of resistance of wood plus moment of resistance of the steel. And this moment of resistance we can calculate by using this formula. If you want to calculate the moment of resistance of wood, you have to take a moment of moment of resistance of the wood can be written as the stress it is in the wood upon y into moment of inertia of the wood. Plus moment of resistance of the steel is the stress it is in the steel at a distance of y into moment of inertia of the steel. Here, like this, you can calculate the total moment of resistance. Uh, you can, the second method which I say that you can convert this switch beam or composite section into equivalent either steel or wood section. And convert that equivalent steel or wood section, yeah, uh, the dimensions which are parallel to the neutral axis only changes. This dimension only changes, the one dimensions which are perpendicular to the neutral axis will not change. Okay. Then, what will be the relation of the composite section and the equivalent section? Yes, for that I think that yes, suppose it is LS into ES is equal to LW into EW. By using this relation, you can convert the length of the steel or the wood into equivalent wood or the steel. Suppose if you want to convert it into equivalent steel section, means this length of the wood you want to convert into length of the steel, equivalent length of the steel. This length of steel remains as it is. So we want an equivalent length of the steel. So from this one, the equivalent length of the steel can be written as it is LW into EW upon ES. In this way, we can calculate the equivalent length of the steel. Second point. Then the third point. In this composite section, the strain at any distance y in these two different materials is remain same. Here means we can equate the strain, strain, strain in steel equal to the strain in wood. But this is the strain at the same distance y from the neutral axis. Yeah? And this strain we can write in terms of stress. Yeah? So this can be written as stress in steel upon modulus of elasticity of the steel equal to the stress in wood upon modulus of elasticity of the wood. Here yeah? from this one we can get the relation between the stress in this in the wood and the stress in this in the steel at the same distance y. So this relation, which I have written here also, here sigma s upon e s equal to sigma w upon e w, this we got by equating the strain. Here, so this relation between the sigma s and sigma w, stress in c and stress in wood, we are at the same distance y from the neutral axis. And so yeah. Then we are following one question. We are able to calculate the moment of resistance of the composite section. Okay, today we will solve two, uh, two more sums on this uh, flitch beam and this will be the end of this lesson. The next question is the sum number 13 from our question bank. Sum number 13, refer to sum number 13 from our question bank. Sum number 13. Okay, tomorrow I am going to start the next lesson, torsion, which is very important lesson, particularly for mechanical student. It is important for the civil also, but for mechanical it is very important here yeah, because the sharp design, coupling design, all that uh, design of the components which are subjected to the twisting moment is based on this lesson. Here yeah, for torsion, don't miss. Some of the thirteen. This is the wooden section and one steel strap is connected at the bottom. This is the steel strap. 
So here the steel strap is connected only at the bottom, at one side only. Yes, not at another side. Also. Yes, the previous question which was solved here in that one there was a wood here and the steel strap was on either side. Okay, we'll read the question later. I'll write a dimension also. But what is the difference between these two? The major difference is here, even though these two different materials are there, but this cross section is symmetrical about this line. Since it is symmetrical, means steel as well as wood, both are symmetrical. And since it is symmetrical, so this centroid, this neutral, this uh, line of symmetry itself becomes the centroidal axis or itself becomes the neutral axis. You don't have to calculate the y bar here. Directly check the observation in the mind. But it is not symmetrical. It is symmetrical about the vertical line. But vertical line is not the axis of bending. Yeah, we want the neutral axis. Yeah. So since it is not symmetrical, this wood having the different density, steel is having the different density. And because of that, yeah, the centroid or mass center won't coincide with the geometrical center of this cross section. Understood? Yeah, and that's why our first intention is to look at the mass center of this cross section. So that we can look at the position of the neutral axis. And remember, if the section is of different material and not symmetrical, then to calculate the position of the centroid, it means to calculate this y bar, it is mandatory to convert it into either equivalent steel section or equivalent wooden section. Understood? Yeah. In this one, you can directly locate it. Just by observation, no need to convert it into equivalent section. Yeah. The remaining sum, whether to solve it by using the composite section or by equivalent section, that is the different thing. Even to convert it into equivalent section, just to look at the centroid, after that you can solve it by using the composite section also. Okay. Yeah, but to locate this centroid, to locate this uh, position of the neutral axis itself, it is mandatory to convert it into equivalent section to calculate that mass center or a uh, center of mass. Okay. So let's convert it into equivalent uh, steel section. I'm converting it into equivalent steel section because the steel is a stronger material, so the less dimensions uh, will be there and the calculation becomes a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, so I write on the dimensions. This is the sum number 30. You can refer from your question back. This is the 250. Depth of the wooden section. Depth of the steel strand is 10 meter. And this is the 50 meter. Okay. Now I am reading the question. It is given that a wooden beam of 150 by 250 millimeter has a steel strand of 150 and 10 meter fixed only at the bottom. It is steel strap is fixed only at the bottom. The beam is subjected to the bending moment of 3 kN meter around the neutral axis. Okay, so this cross section is subjected to the bending moment of how much? 3 kN meter, that is 3 into 10 to 3 newton meter. It is subjected to this much bending moment. Yeah, and we know that in equilibrium, the bending moment is equal to the moment of resistance. Last summit, dimension was given, uh, limiting stresses were given, and in that case, we have calculated the same moment of resistance. In this question, the moment of resistance is given, or bending moment is given. Yeah, so this cross section is subjected to this much bending moment. Determine the stress in the steel and wood. Here you have to calculate the maximum stress in is in the steel and the wood. Then you have to calculate maximum stress in the steel and maximum stress in the wood. These are the induced stresses because of this bending moment. Last summit, permissible stresses were given. And you were asked to calculate the safe moment of resistance. Here, yeah, question is a little bit different. Okay, here you have to calculate because of this bending moment, how much is the maximum stress in the steel and maximum stress in in the wood. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would like to tell you that you know that the maximum stresses are induced in the extreme layer of that particular material. Okay. Here, before that, for a single material, here when the beam is made up of the single material. Okay. In that case, it is very easy to calculate the stress in the steel and or uh, any material. Yeah. Then just we use this formula 
and one time you're going to see pop on light, and we used to get this stress under the sofa for light. Yeah, but here it is little bit different. We have to calculate the stress in the steel and the wood because of this bending. So, how to solve it? I will tell you, but before that, before pushing it further, first you need to locate the center of mass and the number axis. Yeah, when more relation is given, EW equal to, EW equal to, sorry, ES equal to 200 GPA, ES equal to 200 GPA, separate values are given which of giving the relation, and EW is given as, what the elasticity of the wood is given as 10 GPA. These values are given. So before proceeding further, first we have to locate the position of the center of mass and for that we need to convert it into equivalent section. Yeah, so let convert given section, let convert the given section in equivalent steel section. We will convert it into equivalent steel section. Yeah. So the relation is LS into ES equal to LW into EW. So length of the equivalent steel section is equal to original length of the wooden section into EW upon ES, which is equal to length of the wooden section, original length of the wooden section is 150. The dimension which are parallel to the wooden axis are only changes. Yeah. So original length of the wooden section is 150 into EW, EW is 10 upon ES is 200. So we get the equivalent length of the steel. Okay, let's calculate and tell me the answer. How much is that? Equivalent length of the steel in millimeter. 7.5. Uh, tell me. How much? Tell me. 7.5. 7.5, okay. It is 7.5 millimeter. Listen, here EF and EW are given in GP and I use it directly. The reason is that it is the ratio. Okay, since it is the ratio, it doesn't make any difference whether you use it in the GP or MP or whatever it may be in the other unit. But both EW and EF should have the same unit. Okay, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you may say that's the value of the in GP and value of the body area into Newton per millimeter square. So the dimensions are in millimeter. Because it is the ratio, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Yeah, so this is the equivalent length of the steel section for this wooden section. So I'm going to convert, I'm going to draw the equivalent section. Equivalent uh, steel section I'm going to draw. These dimensions which are perpendicular to the neutral axis are remain as it is. Okay. Yeah, this is the vertical axis of symmetry. So this 150 meter gets converted into 7.5. This is 7.5 and this is 250. Okay, and the steel strap is that, that dimension even as it is. So this is the equivalent steel section for this composite section. This is equivalent steel section. 7.5, this is 150 mm as it is and this is 10 mm. Okay, here in the composite section is unsymmetric and it is mandatory to convert it into equivalent section. We have to locate the position of the neutral axis or mass center. Okay, neutral axis always passes through the mass center. Yeah. So for this equivalent section, we have to calculate first y bar, distance of the center of mass from the bottom. And now since we have converted it into a single Material, we are having the same density. Here, my bar you can calculate by using our normal method, by using the area. So let's consider this is the first part, this is the second part. This is the G1 is the center of gravity or centroid for this first centroid, sorry, first rectangle, and G2 is the position of the centroid for the second rectangle. Yeah, so I will equal to A1. This is A1 into y1. This is 10 meters, so y1 is the distance from the bottom of this g1. So it is fine. 10 by 5. Sorry, 10 by 2. Fine. Plus, a2 y1. a2 is this, which is 7.5 into 250 into how much is this y2? How much is this y2? This is the y2 distance. 
we have to see the next one, x axis as the bottom. So, how much is this y2? It is same plus 125. This height is 250. So, centroid lies at its center. Yeah, so this vertical distance is equal to 10 plus this 125. So, 10 plus 125 upon a1 y1, sorry, a1 plus a2. This is a1 plus a2. So, from this one, you will get y bar. Tell me how much is the y bar? How much? Why this much time is required? 77.22 ah, Very good 77.22 is the distance of the center of gravity of centroid here from the bottom Okay, and this is the center of mass for this composite section as well as for this equivalent section Okay, yeah, so this is the position of the center of gravity G Yeah, and horizontal line passing through this is the neutral axis. Here I am extending it. Here I am leaving some space to draw the stress distribution diagram. Even though it is only asked to calculate the stress in the steel and the wood, but I am going to draw the stress distribution diagram. Yeah, so I am going to leave the space here. This neutral axis I have extended. Yeah, and this is the baseline to draw the stress distribution diagram. Okay, and neutral axis the stress is zero. Here, so this is the neutral axis. Passing through the center. Yeah. Now in the question, nothing is given that this bending moment, whether it is a sagging or a hopping. If this would have been a sagging, the upper layers are in compression, lower layers are in tension. Whereas if it is a hogging, pull down. Right? Yeah. So nothing is given. So let's consider that it is sagging. So upper layers are in compression and lower layers are in tension. Okay. So this will be the depth in tension. How much is this distance? It is 77.22. And how much is this distance? This will be 260 minus 77.22. This is 250 plus 10. So total is 260 minus 77.22. You will get this distance. This is of the top wooden layer from the neutral axis. How much is that? Is it 182.78? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, we have calculated the y bar, we have located the neutral axis. Now, in this case, it depends whether you solve the sum considering the wooden section, sorry, considering the composite section or considering the equivalent steel section. The concept method says it is sum to solve the sum. Till now, it is bounded to convert it into equivalent steel section. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you convert it into it, uh, if you want to solve it by considering the composite section, so you have to calculate the moment of inertia for the steel and the wood separately. Okay. Yeah. If you should convert it into equivalent steel section and if you want to solve it by considering the equivalent section, yeah, then you can calculate the moment of inertia of this equivalent section. Yeah. Last time, how many two measures is solved here? Yeah, this time I will show you how uh, we solve it by considering this equivalent section only. Okay, we are considering equivalent section only. Equivalent steel section. Equivalent steel section. Yeah, we are not going to consider the composite section, but we are going to solve some by considering the equivalent steel section. So let's first calculate the moment of inertia of the neutral axis for this equivalent steel section. This is the neutral axis, whose distance is 77.22 from the bottom. And earlier it was the when composite section was there, it was the rectangular section. But now when we convert it into equivalent steel section, it will become now T section, inverted T section. Okay. okay, so for this inverted T section for equivalent steel section, let's calculate the moment of inertia of this neutral axis, which is the distance of 77.22 from the base. Yeah. So let's calculate. I will give the two to three minutes to calculate the moment of the shock this section about this neutral axis, which is passing through the centroid. 
Okay, tell me. So moment of the sharp of the neutral axis. Considering balance steel section, let calculate the moment of the shaft of the neutral axis. Come on, fast. For the equivalent steel section, you have to tell me the moment of inertia. Hey. Abolo. Shreyas. Sir. Ah. जो हाइट लिया ना ऊपर 182.78 वो 172.78 होगा कितना होगा 172.78 172 होगा क्या ऊपर वो 250 में से माइनस किया है ना 77.22 60 में से क्या माइनस किया ये ये बेस क्या है 77.22 फ्रॉम बेस ओके सर ओके सर 60 माइनस 77.22 किया 250 तो मोमेंट ऑफ़ इधर शॉप इस रेक्टेंगल वन अबाउट इट्स ओन सेंट्रल एक्सिस इस बी डी क्यू बाय ट्वेल्व वन फिफ्टी इनटू टेन क्यू अपॉन ट्वेल्व मोमेंट ऑफ़ इधर शॉप इस फर्स्ट रेक्टेंगल अबाउट इट्स ओन सेंट्रल एक्सिस आई जी वन प्लस ए वन वन फिफ्टी इनटू टेन इनटू स्क्वेयर ऑफ़ द डिस्टेंस this is the moment of the shot, this first rectangle whose dimension is 150 by 10, whose moment of the shot we have calculated about this neutral axis. This is the moment of the shot about this axis we have calculated. This is the answer. Any doubt? Have understood this? Okay. Plus I2. I2 is the moment of the shot of this second rectangle. About this neutral axis. Don't forget about this. Okay, its centroid, its own centroidal axis is here, G2, and this is the centroid of the entire line. So first calculate the moment of the shaft of its own centroidal axis, it is I G1, here plus area into square of the distance. So that is the moment of the shaft of the neutral axis. Here so plus in square bracket. Moment of the shaft of the second rectangle. It is B D cube 250 cube upon 12 I G2. Moment of initial moment is both centroidal axis plus area 7.5 to 250 into square of the distance. How much is this distance? So the distance of this uh, listen, distance of this neutral axis from the top is 182.78. And distance from the centroid of this rectangle from the top. This is 125, am I right? This is the centroid which is at the center of this rectangle, whose depth is 250. So the distance of the center from the top is 125. So how much is the distance between these two parallaxes? It is in bracket 182.78 minus 125 whole square. We get the moment of initial about the neutral axis. Any doubt? Unmute yourself and ask me the doubt. Come on, ask.
How much? Twenty three point eight six into ten to the power six millimeters. Next power four. This is the moment of inertia of this steel section about the nucleus. Twenty three point eight six into ten to the power six. I don't have space. Yes, I am going to wipe out this. In it out. In it out. In calculation of the moment of inertia for the equivalent steel section. Okay. Now we are going to calculate the stresses that are going to be on this same part for the equivalent section. Okay. Because we know the moment of inertia for the equivalent moment. We have the moment of inertia for the equivalent section. We are going to calculate the stress. And why distance is also known to you? Okay. Yes, so we are going to use this formula to calculate the stress. Yeah. So the moment of resistance for the equivalent section is equal to now heat is the equivalent steel section. So it is the stress in steel upon y distance of that particular layer into moment of inertia of the equivalent steel section. Yeah. Now moment of resistance is known to you. Okay. Now look at the book. This I value is in millimeter is power four. Y is in millimeter. Yeah. So we will take this moment of
okay so a uh, moment of resistance of equivalent section is equal to the strain in steel upon y into i equal We are using this formula to calculate the strain. The complete moment is known to you. Okay. Only I am using it for the equivalent section. Equivalent section is the steel section. So we are going to consider the strain in steel. Okay. So the steel strain is to fix into strain in steel upon one. Now we know that the maximum metric stress it is in the extreme layer. So extreme layer of the steel is at a distance of seventy seven point two from the equal axis. So y takes seventy seven point two two into moment of initial of the equivalent section. Yeah, which is twenty three point eight six into ten to six. Substitute that, you will get the answer. That is the stress in the steel. Okay. Then how much is that answer? Stress in the steel nine point seven zero nine. Nine point seven zero nine. I write nine point seven one. Okay, and we are passing that it is the sagging bending moment. So this there is the below neutral axis. Yes, yeah, so what will be the unit? Sorry, what will be the nature? What is the nature of the stress in this in the bottom layer of the steel? We are assuming that it is subject. It is the sagging bending moment. So the layer below neutral axis are in tension. So this is the maximum stress in the steel. At a distance of five to seventy-seven point two two. Now, how can I calculate the maximum stress in the wood? Okay. Now, remember, this is the relation between the stress in the steel and the wood. Okay. Now, if I do this, yeah. So, if I want to calculate the stress in the wood, the yeah, stress in the wood is equal to stress in steel upon E S into E W. Okay, stress in the steel is nine point seven one upon ES. ES is two hundred. Here again there is a ratio, so I am taking the GP only directly into ten. So how much is this? Nine point seven one upon twenty. Come on, tell me the answer. Seven one upon twenty. Why so much time is required? Zero point four eight. Zero point four eight newton per meter square. This is the stress in wood. Here, this is the stress in wood in which they are. Is it the stress in the wood in its extreme layer? The extreme layer of the steel is at a distance of one eighty two point seven eight from the neutral axis. This is the extreme layer of the. Wood. The maximum stress in this is the wood will be at this layer. This is the maximum stress in the steel. If this is the maximum stress in the steel, will it be the maximum stress in the wood? Or tell me, this zero point four eight newton per meter square stress, which is in this in the wood, in which layer? Come on, unmute yourself and tell me. Online teaching doesn't mean that uh, to just listen or provision. Unmute yourself, Tathanj, Shreyas. Zero point four eight newton per meter square. Just stress. I am. Who? Which layer? Me. The top layer. Pardon? The top column. I'm not. Uh, you are not audible. Tathanj. Anybody else? The mic is not working. Then uh, write down in chat box. Shreyas Nangge. Yes, sir. 
tell me the answer have you understood my question or not no sir i have uh, entered issue can you repeat it again we we use this relation to calculate the stress in the steel and the wood yeah this is the relation between the stress in the steel and the wood okay i have calculated the stress in the steel 9.71 and y equal to 7.77.2 because the extreme layer of the steel is that is of 77.2 for the neutral axis and this is the extreme layer of the neutral axis sorry extreme layer of the steel that's why this is the maximum stress in the steel if this is the maximum stress in the steel here and by using this formula if i get the stress in using the wood will it be the maximum stress in the wood here maximum stress in using the wood will be Yeah, and the extreme care of the wood is at a distance of 180.7. Sir, your presentation stopped. Pardon? Sir, your presentation has stopped. Presentation has stopped. Is it visible now? Yes, sir, it's visible. Ah, okay. So tell me. This zero point four eight newton per meter square is stress is in which layer of the wood? Will it be the maximum stress in the wood at a distance of one eighty two point seven eight, or is it the stress in the layer of wood at some other distance? Which final is the most important one? So the bus. This is the relation between the stress in the steel and the wood. They are at the same distance from the neutral axis. Yeah. Since we use this value of the stress to calculate the stress in the wood, so this will be the stress in the wood at the same layer. So this is the stress in the wood at one equal to seventy-seven point two. Okay. Yeah. And below the neutral axis, at this distance there will be any layer of the wood, but at the top of the neutral axis there will be any layer of the wood at a distance of seventy-seven point two. But this won't be the maximum stress in the wood because the maximum stress in this is the extreme layer, which is not at a distance of seventy-seven point two two, which is at a distance of one eighty two point seven eight. So let's calculate the maximum stress in the wood. Maximum stress in wood at y equal to how much? The extreme layer of the wood is at a distance of one eighty two point seven eight. Okay, so at y point one eighty two point seven, let's calculate how much is the stress in the wood. Zero point four eight is at a distance of seventy seven. Sorry, seventy seven point two two. This is the stress in the wood at a distance of seventy seven point two two. So how much is the stress in at a distance of one eighty two point seven? This will be the maximum stress in the wood. At y equal to one eighty two point seven. Okay, this answer is one point one four nine. That is one point one five meter per meter square. And next time, if you are doing the same approach there, if you are just coming here and listening the pravachan, in one hour I am going to finish one lesson. Okay, so let draw the plan. This is the maximum stretch in the wood, and this is the maximum stretch in the steel. Yeah, this is the stress in the wood at an intermediate level at a distance of seventy-seven point two two. It is asked to calculate the maximum stresses in the steel and the wood. So this is the maximum stress in the wood. This is the maximum stress in the steel. Then yeah, let's draw the proportion and see that. Remember, at neutral axis the bending stress is zero. Yeah, uh, you can draw it separately also, or you can plug both the figures together. Okay, I will use a different chart. First, I will draw the bending stress distribution diagram for the wood. Yeah, so in the axis layer of the wood, it is one point one five. So here it is one point one five, one point one five. And the neutral axis it is zero. Yeah, so if I okay, this value of the stress in using the wood. Yeah, that I have not calculated. Actually, at this layer, there is no layer of the wood. Okay, here 
गुड का लेयर यहां तक ही है सो दिस इज द बेंडिंग स्टेज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डायग्राम फॉर द गुड बेंडिंग स्टेज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डायग्राम फॉर द गुड इट कनो आई आएगा इफ यू वांट टू कैलकुलेट दिस वैल्यू यू कैन यूज द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ सिमिलर ट्रेंड गेट दिस 1.15 इज द परसेंट स्क्वायर इज एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ 182.78 सो हाउ मच इज द स्ट्रेस इन एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ हाउ मच इज दिस 77.2 माइनस 10 67.02. You can again use the property of similar triangles for every little this value also. Stress in this in the wood at a distance of 67.22 from the neutral axis. This is the bending stress distribution diagram for the wood. Okay. Now for the steel and the bottom layer of the steel, which is at a distance of 77.22, the value of the stress is 9.71. So this is the baseline. So here. This is 9.71, and at neutral axis is zero. So I'm drawing a straight line and joining these two points. Okay. So this is the stress in this the steel. You can observe that this is the bending stress diagram for the stress in this the steel, and this is the bending stress distribution diagram. For the stress in this in the wood, we have calculated this 9.71. We have calculated this 1.15, and this is the stress in this in the wood at the intermediate level. We have this value of the stress in this in the steel, and this value of the stress in this in the wood. You can calculate just by using the property of similar kind. Okay, either you can calculate it separately, or this also you can. Draw in one figure and draw the stress distribution diagram for the wood as well as well for the steel. This uh, the stress distribution diagram which is shown by the yellow chalk is for steel and for uh, this pink chalk I use for the wood. Take it out. No sir. Okay. This is the last sum. Uh, one sum. Uh, sum number sixteen. Sum number sixteen. Take it for homework. Okay, I will uh, produce this uh, only in the Google Classroom. You have to solve it, make a PDF, and submit it today by ten p.m. Okay, if you understood this, both the questions here in the for this sum number sixteen, and this is the end of the bending stress lesson. Tomorrow I am going to start the torsion. Thank you. Write your name and roll number in the chat box in two minutes.